Hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Katie. So today I'm going back to basics and um, showing you how to make your basic bubble style necklace. So this can also be made into a bracelet. So what we need for this are some tools. So we're going to use some six step bailing pliers or basically a small mandrel that's all one size. We don't want the round nose pliers because that's more of a cone shape, but we want it to be a very thin mandrel so you could also use something like one of your thinner crochet hooks or something like that something that's got a constant um, size some flush cutters some narrow nose pliers something that goes to a nice fine tip and we're going to use some crimping pliers to finish it off at the end now i'm using two strands of size eight millimeter beads so these strands are approximately about 38 centimeters long um, and I'm also going to use some seed beads as little spacers. I'm probably not going to use all these beads, but that's, that's kind of just what I've opened up and got started getting prepared. So we're going to be preparing these. These are what's going to make our little bubble style more textured, really tactile part of our jewellery. And then we're going to finish the neckline with some, some beads as well. And all the beads I'm using today are amethyst. We're also going to be using some head pins. I've already used most of them in this, but I'm using a head, but you can use any sort of head pin you like, as long as it will go through your bead. But standard size head pins, the ones that I'm using, have got a, a flat um, head on them so that we, they're a bit less visible, but also it gives a nice glint of metal on the end. You see how that makes a nice flash off the, uh, the light there and some beading thread so just your basic beading thread so this is also called somewhere sometimes called tiger tail and it's just your basic standard beading thread and some findings which we've got some crimp beads some jump rings and a bolt ring clasp and some jump uh, some crimp covers there we go i think that's everything so i will just move some things out of the way and we'll get started so the first thing we have to do is use our head pins and our beads to make these little um, connectors that are going to thread onto our beading thread and create that lovely textured bubble design. So we're going to take one of our head pins and just pop our bead straight onto it like so and then we're going to use the length of this head pin to just kind of roll down towards the bead and then that's going to create that little coil that we have that we can thread on so we do that by using the smallest mandrel on our baling pliers so we want a nice the thinnest one we, that we've got like i said try and use something that is a constant width all the way down rather than your round nose pliers because then you if you use your round nose pliers, basically you're going to get more of a cone shape and we want a straight shape. So we can pop our pliers in right at the very end and then start winding this around. So we're just going to keep gripping and turning, grip and turn, release and turn, release and turn. And just really controlling this wire going all the way around here. And then just when we get to that opposite side, we just want them to kind of go past each other so they stay nice and close together and there's grip and turn grip and turn and you can kind of start moving a little bit faster then like so okay so we've got all the way around and we've got that coil on our pliers and then all we're going to do is wiggle that and let it come off that Okay, so we're just going to do that again. And we're going to need to do that with all our beads. Now it's up to you how many you put on. You can make it really elaborate and make it really wide. I think mine's going to be around about 45 beads. So again, popped on, just let that focus. And then starting right at the very tip, it's just a matter of kind of grip, turn, release. And then when we get to where our wires are starting to meet each other, they just need to pass each other right next to each other. So turn open i'll do it a little bit more exaggerated so you can see turn open grip turn open grip turn open so all the way down like so and then just wiggle off because it'll be nice and tight on there so we'll just do a couple more just so you can see that happening so turn and just be careful when you come around to that opposite end that it doesn't kind of go over the top because we want it to be in that nice cone shape like so also we've got that nice little cone shape on top of our bead 
and we'll do these two just to make sure that we've got as many as we possibly can so just make sure you've got lots and lots of head pins so there's nothing worse than making one of these and then finding out that you haven't quite got enough and just to use this last one so grabbing right at the tip again and working our way down so I'm not kind of exaggerating as much there but I'm just opening just releasing that pressure as I'm turning and you'll find the the more you do the quicker you'll be at making these okay so these are the few that I just made so once you've made them don't just leave them like that because what will happen is there will be a tiny little end that we need to just look at to make sure if you think our thread's going to go through here and there is a little edge on there that might be a little bit sharp and we don't want that against the skin so just using your round uh, your chain nose pliers just make sure don't crush it just tap it in and then just grab that very tip and just tuck it inwards so just tuck it inwards just so that it's not totally going to be sat against the skin so that it, there's nothing kind of there to scratch the skin or anything I'll do that again so just find where that end is and just kind of support everything and then just grab just that very tip and turn it in now it doesn't matter if I can show you there let's see there it doesn't matter if they've got that end pointing inwards and you just think oh well, that doesn't look very well finished nobody's ever going to see that that see that because they're all going to be right up against each other but that end is better off pointing inside this little coil than pointing on the outside and actually hurting somebody so that's the kind of look that we want so let's just finish these opposite ones so just holding everything supporting everything grabbing that very tip and just tipping it inwards towards the center of the coil and just manipulating it however way you feel like you need to just so that edge isn't kind of on the outside of the coil perfect okay so now we can start threading our beading thread so I'm going to take a length of beading thread I know what my necklace to be about 18 inches but I'm going to take a little bit longer than that because we need some to be able to manipulate to do the ends so I've probably got about probably about 28 inches I always take more than I need you probably don't need that much but there we go so I'm just going to widen that shot a little bit there we go so all we need to do is we're going to work on the sides afterwards but we're going to thread all these on now so and it really is just threading so just popping one on there's no way of doing this unless you've done these with different sizes then obviously think about putting maybe your larger ones in the middle and then working out to the sides as you go but you'll see very quickly when you put them on they kind of all bunch together like so so that's the kind of look that, that we're going to achieve going to get and a really nice tactile jewelry so i'm just going to thread all these on and then i'm going to work on threading the sides so when it comes to threading the sides all i'm going to do is add an amethyst and then a seed bead just to, just as a spacer bead until i get to the length of the necklace i want to be minus one inch because we will have the the length of the clasp to consider there as well so i will join you back when this is all almost ready to add our clasp so i have pre-threaded everything on so i threaded all my little uh, connection parts that we made all these little uh, coiled parts in this section here and then I've separated all my gemstones with a size 11 seed bead so I've got I think it's about 45 of these and then I've got 18 gemstones on each side and these are all eight millimeter gemstones and that's given me a 17 inch so my clasp is going to add me that extra inch to make my 18 inches now just for um demonstration purposes I've just popped a little crimp just on this end just to stop any beads falling off because I'll be watching the camera and not watching my beads but normally I would um, work without that crimp on the end so just to start with what we want to do is create a connection on this side so I can see I've got a lot of thread so I'm just going to pull some of that through there so I've got a lot of thread so what I'm going to do is I've finished on a seed bead and I'm going to pick up my crimp tube, my little crimp tube there. 
so we'll try and get a bit closer there if we can. So I've got my crimp tube on there, so I can let that drop down. Then I'm going to pick up my clasp part, so I'm going to pop my clasp on. And then I'm going to go back to that crimp bead that's there and go back through with my beading thread. So back through, so I've created a loop with my clasp on there. So I've come all the way back through and then what I can do is I can pull this so we're not bothered about it being kind of tight to this at the moment because this is our first side. So I want to pull this just so that I've got a loop but it's still got to have some movement. So just a tiny bit smaller but it's still got some, some movement there as well. So I've got my crimp in place. I'm going to go in with my crimp in pliers. Now I have done a video on crimping so adding a clasp so if you want to watch that that's uh, I'll pop the link above there so when we're crimping we use the one with a little notch in first so the part of the the pliers that have got that little dent you can see that little dent in first because what we're doing is we're actually folding the crimp first so I'm going to pop that in there and fold that crimp and then you will see that little groove if I turn this over this side will have that little groove in there you see that there? And then we're going to go in with the notch at the top, which is more circular, and squash that together so it creates a little beads. So we've squashed that, that fold together, and then I always give it a little extra squish just with the very ends. Okay, so I've got that little tail on there. So what I want to do is try and pass that tail through some of my beads. So making sure we don't miss any. So go through that first seed bead, through there and let's see if we can get this seed bead on as well and so we've come all the way through and I've just got a little bit left on there so I'm going to snip that off so just be careful you don't snip the actual thread off as well so my beads are all the way up to where my crimp is there just here there we go so now what I can do is I can start pushing all these beads Long. so I just pulled that up there so and I want my my necklace to be push tight but also have flexibility so that's why I'm kind of turning it on my mat so just so that I know it's going to have some flexibility so I've turned that on my mat I'm just going to move that bit to one side a little bit and now I'm going to work on this side so I'm going to take some of this beading thread off just for ease and again what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up one of my crimp tubes like so, so that crimp tube is on there. Then I'm going to pick up a jump ring. So I'm going to pop my jump ring on there too. Now make sure your jump ring doesn't jump over your crimp tube, like that just did. So, and actually just before I do that, I've just noticed, just make sure you double check things like this, I haven't got a seed bead right on the very end there, so let's just pop a seed bead. I can see it's still it's attached to the other bit of thread, but we'll add this one on. The bit that I chopped off. So I'm just going to pop that little seed bead on there. Then we're going to pick up our crimp tube and then we're going to pick up our jump ring and then we're going to come back again through. So we're going to miss that jump ring. See that jump ring there? We're going to come over the top of the jump ring and back through that crimp bead. Okay, now this time what we could do with is actually coming through the beads first, so if we can do, so we can just take this beading thread and bring this beading thread through a few of these beads first, so only about the same amount as we did at the other side, so I'm just taking this end through these beads like so, and then we can pull it all together, so come through same amount of beads that we did at the other side, the opposite side. And now we can start just tightening this up. So I'm going to tighten this up, making sure everything's still kind of turned on my mat because I do want some flexibility. Again, tighten up and then just gently hold everything together and then just pull this, pull this tail until we've got the size loop that we want. Again, we want it to have some maneuverability it needs to be able to move freely in that little loop there and we're going to go in again with our crimp pliers on that notched part first give it a good squeeze turn it over and 
in that little section there at the top we're going to squeeze that crimp together now make sure it's fully turned over so you're squeezing it in the right direction and give that a good squeeze I'm happy with that and I always give it a little extra one there we go so that's all connected now I can get rid of this tail of beading wire and give that a snip off now all but we're done all but our crimp covers so I'm just going to bring that out a little bit just so you can see a bit more so all we need to do now is add in our crimp covers and our necklace is nearly finished so I'm going to pop on my crimp cover so I'm going to pop it on usually do this from the underneath now you will find especially if you've never done crimp uh, beading before crimp covers are fiddly things so I'm trying to there we go it's in there so what happens is a crimp cover it kind of is like that little pac-man shape so it's got that open side so what you need to do is that little tube that we just crimped is get that to sit right inside and when I say right inside it needs to be all the way inside that central part before we start um, bringing these together so um, I'm going to use a different pair of pliers for this just because um, these ones are a bit more grippy on there so I'm just using some just narrow nose pliers and I'm just going to start and generally squeeze a little bit at a time and then move a little bit and then squeeze never just go for it and just squeeze all in one go so just a little bit at a time taking your time each time it comes together a little bit changing your angle a little bit like so and squeezing just a little bit at a time until we've got that closed so I'm happy with that side I'm going to do the same with the opposite side so this is the trickiest bit actually getting it to go onto the crimp there we go now this side's always a little bit harder because you haven't got as much to hold at the other side but try and hold that down and it will keep your thread out of the way if you can so try and do it like that otherwise you're not going to be able to see anything so just a little bit at a time move anything out of the way that needs to be moved just squeezing tiny little bits a bit at a time until you get a nice rounded bead now that's starting to go off a little bit there so I need to squeeze it in the opposite direction so you can always kind of correct yourselves there we go nice and round again now so there we go our necklace is finished I will take a picture of this on a bust for you so you can see the way it drapes as well and I'll add that at the very end for you so our clasp you see how that added that extra inch when you look at the components individually you think oh that's not going to add an inch but when you actually pop them all together you can see that's that's added that whole inch but this is what it's given us this amazing uh, tactile beautiful piece of jewelry to wear and it's one of those that even though it's so so simple it's one of those that people will kind of ask you where did you get that how did you make that it's um it's a really beautiful one to make and even though these are all just little coils i still think that that flash of metal and those, all those coils in between look absolutely amazing too so and you can do it in lots of different size beads you can um like I say graduate your beads go from maybe a larger bead in that center and then work out to smaller beads at the side this can also become the most amazing bracelet so just like that it looks absolutely gorgeous as a bracelet too so there we go that's our demonstration complete and thank you very much for watching pop me a like down below if you've enjoyed the video please um subscribe to my channel i have lots and lots of videos available and lots more on the way um while we are in lockdown i've got so much time on my hands that i'm able to make lots and lots of content so please uh join me and i will see you again very very soon with more youtube tutorials so you take care thank you